Hello, hello everybody, this is TipTopMTG, here today with another Magic the Gathering video. In today's video, we are going to be looking at all the spoilers from today for Double Masters, today being July 21st, and I'm going to talk about what their value is, what set they were last reprinted is, and just my overall thoughts on it, as well as my overall thoughts about Double Masters. You know, spoiler time is a really exciting time where we get to see what's going to be the next product, uh, and so I hope you guys enjoy. I'm doing these every day of spoilers, so keep an eye out for those. Why don't we just jump right into this? Starting off, we have Path to Exile. So this is a one-cause white enchantment, uh, white instant, not enchantment, what? White instant exile target creature. Its controller may search their library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle their library. So this is a very, very powerful card. It sees a lot of play. I know it at least commander, and it's just a one-cost removal spell that, yes, you do give them a land, which can be a bad thing. But generally, it's going to be worth it. It's only going to sp take one mana. It's just it's generally considered to be one of the better removal spells. Uh, and yes, that's at three ninety nine. It was last reprinted in Jumpstart, and it's an uncommon. So that really shows you how valuable it is. It's a three dollar or four dollar uncommon that was reprinted in the last set. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Next, we have Flicker Wisp. This is a 3-cost white creature elemental 3-1 with flying, and when it enters the battlefield, exile another target permanent, return that card to the battlefield under its control, owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So this just has a lot of utility in flickering things. Because it happens at the beginning of the next end step, it's not super easy to go infinite with just because, you know, it, it does it at the end step, but it, it has some interesting you know, uses for the fact that it's exiling a permanent, uh, and it could be your opponent's permanent, it can be a planeswalker, it could be really anything, uh, and so that's very interesting. Unfortunately, it's only 49 cents, but it is an uncommon, so I really don't, you know, when I'm looking at the value of a double master's pack, I'm not looking at the uncommons to add value, but when they do, that's a bonus. Next, we have Blade Slice, Splicer. It's a three cost white, a creature, a human artificer, 1 1. And when it enters the battlefield, create a 3 3. So you're getting four t power and four toughness for three mana, which is pretty good. And it says golems you control at first strike. So you're kind of getting, you know, three. It, it, it's very good. It's a very good rate, especially in white. But it is still only a 49 cent card. And this one's a rare. So that's really devastating. Imagine pulling this in a $15 pack. You're like, oh, well, this card, you know, the, you may have pulled an uncommon that's worth more than this. And I just, I don't get why this is in here. I get, I kind of get it, you know, limited environment and not everything can be worth a lot, but I just really, mm, this is not great. Next, we have Stonehewer Giants, a 5-cost white 4-4 four, four creature giant warrior with Vigilance, and you can pay 1 in a white and tap it, and search your library for an equipment card, put it on the battlefield, then attach it to a creature you control, then shuffle your library. This is very powerful. You can get the perfect equipment at the perfect time, and you don't even have to pay the equip cost, which means even if you don't need an equipment at the time, go get something that's really, it doesn't even matter, get the most expensive equipment in the game that has the most expensive equip cost, and boom, you got it for 2 mana right out of your library not even out of your hand so very very powerful card that's why it's at six bucks uh still not great for a 15 dollar pack but if you count the fact that you might get a good uncommon you have foils in there it, it's probably right around what you want your race to be worth however this is more than likely going to fall as more gets uh, as more get added to circulation so just keep that in mind yeah, of course, it was last reprinted in Modern Masters. Also, sorry, I meant to give this disclaimer a little bit ago, but the prices are in USD, they are from Card Kingdom, and they are as of July 21st. These prices are going to change. It's not a, they might change. No, they are going to change. They are probably going to fall. So if you're watching this not on July 21st, I recommend you look at these prices just because, or, you know, within July 21st. But I recommend if there's a card you're really interested, look at the prices again because they're going to change. Next, we have Osher's Command, so the middle is a foreign language card, so just on the left, I put a past version of it so we can see what it does. It's a six-cost white source screen. It says, choose to destroy all artifacts, destroy all enchantments, destroy all creatures with converted mana cost three or less, or destroy all creatures with converted mana cost four or greater. And this is honestly one of my favorite uh, board wipes because, right, let's say I'm playing, this, playing a token deck. Well, I can run this for the four or greater, and if I also want to blow up artifacts, I can. Um, you know, it also, at its worst, it is a six 
strength costs destroy all creatures. So if you need to just wipe every single creature off the board, you got it. Do you need to, it could be a six cost destroy all artifacts and enchantments, which, you know, those are similar, you know, it's kind of a cleansing Nova in that case. But you can also say you're playing a token deck and all your stuff costs less than three. You can destroy all creatures with power four greater and all enchantments. Or, you know, it's just, it's so versatile and I really love it. It's at 17 bucks. Uh, yeah, that's probably right where you want a rare to be. I mean, obviously this is a really good rare to pull because you do get two rares per pack. So if you pull this, you're generally, that's the price of the pack. You just paid for it with this one card. The rest is just in addition. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it's nice to see some higher value rares. If we look at yesterday, there weren't that many rares that it were worth a lot. It was all the mythics. And yes, mythics should be worth at least the price of the pack. Uh, and so it's good to see some rares that are worth a little bit more. Next, we have Thirst for Knowledge, which is another uncommon. Three cause blue instant, draw three cards, then discard two unless you discard an artifact. For, the, for those of you who don't know, uh, this was first conceived of as Artifact Masters, so there is a lot of artifact synergy, a lot of artifacts, and so this is just one example of that. Again, it's an uncommon, so I can't really like blame the, it for being worth 25 cents, but it is kind of weird to see it saying it was just reprinted in Jumpstart, although now it has different uh, art. It, this is, I believe, not the original, but it's older art, so yeah, pretty cool. Next, we have Cyclonic Rift. All right, so this is a commander staple. It's a two-cost blue instant, and it says return target non-land permanent you don't control to its owner's hand. And then you can overload it for seven. So at for seven, at instant speed, you can return every non-land permanent that you don't control. So this is an asymmetrical board wipe that can be done at instant speed right before your turn. Very, very powerful. Uh, and yeah, it's from Modern Masters 2017, but it's at $34.99. And this is honestly one of my not favorite cards, I hate when it's used against me, but it's, you know, if I'm playing Commander and I have blue in my deck, this is probably going in it. So the fact that this price is going to be brought down is amazing. On top of that, this is probably the most expensive rare we've seen. Mythics, yes, we've seen more expensive, but for rares, this is pretty good. You are wanting to pull this. This is worth more than some mythics. Uh, and speaking of being worth more than some mythics, there is a, you know, a foil, not a foil, yes, yeah, sometimes foil if you're opening them in the $100 boosters, but the borderless cards for this, and it, it looks like this. And honestly, this is really amazing. Uh, I believe this is the first time that Cyclonic Rift is going to have a, like, promo version and because it's such a big card in commander like every blue deck wants it and i've said this before commander players are much more likely to like bling out their deck or want the alternate arts because they're going to keep playing with that deck it's not like it's going to rotate out or fall out of the meta because there is no meta really so they're more likely to do that also a card like this is kind of a safe bet you can probably throw it in any deck you probably, yeah, even if you're like, oh, I don't want this deck anymore you probably have another blue deck that this can go in and the art on it is amazing I'm super excited, and I honestly wouldn't be surprised if this comes out to be one of the more expensive borderless cards. Now, uh, after spoiler season, I always do a top 10 most expensive card video, uh, and so for this set, I am doing a top 10 most expensive cards and a top 10 most expensive borderless cards. So keep an eye out for those if you want to know what borderless cards or what box toppers you're looking for uh, to really be worth a lot. So, well, I'll, yeah, I'm doing, I just thought I'd let you guys know that. Let's move on to the next card. Next, we have Arkham Dagson. This is a four cons blue legendary creature human artificer 2-2, and it says tap set target artifact creatures controller sacrifices it that player may search their library for a non-creature artifact uh card and put it on the battlefield and then shuffle their library so a very powerful ability you can you know take your random one one artifact creature and turn it into i don't know something humongous but the reason that this is expensive and it's not even it doesn't even pay it's a mythic first off which i think is where this went wrong if this was a rare it'd be an exciting reprint but it's a mythic and it's worth less than the price of the pack and i expect that to fall dramatically the only reason it is so expensive it doesn't see play anywhere is because it was only printed once in cold snap and cold snap had a you know a very small supply so yeah i expect there's not a mu much demand there just wasn't much supply so Keep that in mind, this is not going to be a mythic you want to pull. It's probably the first mythic I was like, no, I'd rather have a rare. Uh, at least some rares. Some rares are worth 50 cents, so who knows? Uh, yeah, this is kind of interesting, but, you know, it makes it... Maybe this will shoot up in price. Maybe, you know, because it had such a low print run, no one was playing it. Maybe now commander players are going to be like, ooh, this is really good. I should throw this in, but yeah. Next, we have Doomed Necromancer. It's a three-cost black 2-2 two -two creature human cleric mercenary. You can pay a black and tap and sacrifice it and return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So this was last reprinted in Commander 2019, and it's a 49-cent rare. 
yeah, that's disappointing. Um, they couldn't have thrown in, like, reanimate? I don't know. Maybe it is still in here, but, like, this, I mean, yes, reanimate was just a jumpstart, uh, but 49 cents, you, there are enough 49 cent rares where it is very possible that you can consistently get a dollar worth of rares from your $15 packs, and if you're doing this in, you know, Commander Master, not Commander Masters, <laughs> uh, if you're doing this in the VIP boosters, these, these are even more disappointing, you know, this is worth, like, one two hundredth of the pack, wow, that's, uh, very disappointing. Next, we have a Skithrix, the Blight Dragon. It's a five-cost black legendary creature, Dragon Skeleton 4-4, with flying infect, and you can pay a black and give it haste, or you can pay two black and regenerate it. So, okay, this was only printed once in Scars of Mirrodin, and that was the original printing of it, and it's worth $35. Now, this is the, you know, if you think infect commanders, this is one of them, mostly because it has infect, another one is Atraxa, but... Uh, yeah, this is a pretty good card. I expect it to maintain its value. Not maintain its value. It's definitely going to drop, but, like, I don't see it dropping below $15. Um, yeah, just pretty good. It could, though, because this is the first reprint of it. It may have been a demand issue, or a supply issue instead of a demand issue. So, that'll be interesting to see, as, you know, will this stay at $35 or will it drop? Next, we have Dark Confidant. This is a 2 cost black 2-1 creature human wizard. At the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library. You put that card and put that card into your hand. You lose life equal to its converted mana cost. So this sees a lot of play in a lot of different places. It's just a really cheap way to draw extra cards each turn. I'm personally not a fan of it. You have to reveal the card. You're going to lose a lot of life. You know, this obviously wants to go in a deck that has a very low CMC uh, account, like maybe a Luris deck. This goes well because everything's most things are going to be low cmc so yeah that's definitely interesting it's 50 bucks it was last reprinted in modern masters but this thing also has a showcase version with this art and i'm actually not a huge fan of this art uh but you know it's not awful uh like if someone was like "Ooh, you can have this or this it's not like it's that bad it's just it's different i, I don't know the off-centeredness kind of is weird uh but either way i'm not an art critic Let's get into the price a little bit more. So 50 bucks, I expect that to drop, but this is obviously one of the cards you're looking to open, especially as the box topper. Next, we have Trash for Treasure. It's a three cost red sorcery. As an additional cost to cast the spell, sacrifice an artifact, and you can return an artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, if you want, you could theoretically return the artifact you just sacked. So if it has an ability that you can like tap to activate, you could tap it, sacrifice it, return it to the battlefield. Uh, do the same, you can just tap it again, or if it has a good ETB or a good win this leaves the battlefield ability, you know, this can be kind of an artifact flickerer, uh, but it's only 79 cents, but it is an uncommon, so again, you can't really, you know, blame it if that's you know, what I'm, that's not really what, not blame it, but like, it's, I'm not disappointed by it. Next, we have Heat Shimmer. It's a three-cost red sorcery. It says, create a token that's a copy of target creature, except it has haste, and at the beginning of the, of the end step, exile this permanent. Uh, it's originally from Lauren, but that was the original printing. Whenever you, this is, like, the first reprint of something, and it, the price is slightly higher, expect it to drop a lot, high, like, a lot more than other cards, because other cards have shown that they want to go back up in price even when they get reprinted. This is more than likely a supply issue. It's only $1.99, so I expect this to be one of the bulk rares that you just never want to open. Next, we have Kragen Wick Cremator. It's a four-cause red creature giant shaman. When it enters the battlefield, discard a card at random. If you discard a creature card this way, it deals damage equal to that card's power to target player or planeswalker. Uh, okay. It's a 35-cent card. Meh. That's, like, all I have to say about it. Next, we have Sneak Attack. This is a really good card. Uh, again, it's a mythic, though. So it says, you, you know, it's an enchantment, four cost. You can pay a red, and you may put target, put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. That creature gains haste, sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. So, yep, you're going to, like, flash something out, be like, huh, I'm hitting you with it, or doing something with it, and then it's going to die. Uh, generally, this is, you know, played with uh, Emrakuls and, you know, Gristle Brands and all sorts of craziness. Yeah, it's just generally a very, very good card. It's at $35, and there is a more expensive version. You guessed it. There's a showcase version. Uh, uh, it's a very it's very interesting. I th think I like the original better, but I like 
some of them it's like I like the original better, but that's just because it's the original, and I don't think any piece of art would ever top it, except for maybe Cyclonic Rift. Uh, that art was amazing. This was still pretty good. I like it. Uh, I might use it over the original. Next, we have Noble Hierarch. This is a one-cost green creature, human druid, 0-1 with exalted, and you can tap to add green, white, or blue. So this is one of the best mana dorks in modern. This is just a very good card, you know, if you're running those colors in commander, just generally the re a really good card. It has the exalted thing, so if you want to, you know, be a Voltron type deck, this is, you know, it boosts it just a little bit. So it just does everything, uh, and that's why it's worth $19.99 or 20 bucks. Uh, yeah, pretty good. It was last reprinted in Ultimate Masters, and it was actually a box topper there. And guess what? It's also a box topper here. Um, so here's what it looks like. I actually really like the art on this one. And honestly, the whole borderless thing, I think it makes even art that maybe isn't as good as the original, or maybe it is, but just, you know, bias. I, I think the borderless just makes it amazing, whether you really like the art or not. Alright, so yeah, I like this card. Next we have Sphinx Summoner, it's a 5 cost Demir, or blue and black, artifact creature Sphinx 3-3, three, three, and it says if it has flying, and when it enters the battlefield you may search your library for an artifact creature card, or be let put it into your hand if you do stuff your library, so uh, very just meh, obviously you can see here that it was downshifted to uncommon, it was uh, rare in Commander 2016, but now it's 69 cents, so yeah, um, not bad, it's an uncommon, so again I can't complain. Next, we have Voice of Resurgence. So this is a green and a white creature elemental 2-2, and when an opponent casts a spell during your turn, or when Voice of Resurgence dies, create a green and white elemental creature token with this creature's power and toughness are each equal to the number of creatures you control. So, very powerful card. Now, it was last reprinted in Modern Masters 2017, and it has now been downshifted to rare from Mythic, so expect the price of this to drop dramatically. Like, that's really good. Now, when you're opening a pack, the fact that this is going to probably be a 4 to $5 card is probably not that great. But the fact if you were, like, going to buy a single, you know, if you're going to buy singles and you wanted four copies of this, this is going to be much cheaper to get now thanks to this. So, depends on how you look at it. This is either a really good thing or a meh thing. At least it's not a mythic. If it was a mythic, I would be very disappointed in the price of it. Next, we have Ry Riss, Rise the Redeemed. Uh, it's a green or a white for a legendary creature, Elf Warrior 1-1, one, one, and you can pay three, one of it being a green or a white, tap, and it says create a 1-1 one, one green and white Elf Warrior creature token. Or you can pay six, two of it either being green or two of it being white, or one green, one white, whatever, uh, and you basically duplicate all your tokens. So a very powerful commander as it comes out turn one, just sees a decent, yeah, sees a decent amount of playing commander. It's $7.49. That is exactly what you want a rare to be. You want it to be worth half the price of the pack. So I don't think, uh, I think this is right, you know, the kind of card they should be aiming at as a just mediocre rare. Uh, it was last reprinted Mystery Booster. This That means that it'll be the first time that it sees its new like legendary frame and the new wording because you notice I said something that's different from there because that's the old wording so I'm just really excited because I, I have a risk deck so uh, maybe pick up the new version. Next, let's talk about Brea Ethereum Shaper. It's white, blue, black, red for a legendary artifact creature human 4-4 four, four, and when it enters the battlefield create two 1-1 one, one thopters. Then, you can pay two and sacrifice two artifacts and choose one. Brea deals three damage to target player or planeswalker. Target creature gets minus four, minus four until end of turn, or you gain five life. So she just is kind of like a utility tool. She can, you know, oh, I need to kill a planeswalker? I'll do that. Do I need to get the last bit of damage? I'll do that. Do I need to kill a creature? I can do that. Are you about to die? I can heal you. So she kind of does everything except for generate you card advantage, uh, but you just want to throw her in with a bunch of artifacts, and that makes a lot of sense in this set. Yeah, fourteen ninety nine, not bad. I mean, it is a mythic, so that is kind of bad. But uh, I don't see it drop. I don't know this card. I, I don't know. It's a very popular commander, so I I don't know how much it is going to drop. Uh, but I expect it to go back up eventually. Also, this is the first time a non foil Brea will be available, which is kind of cool. 
Next, we have Lux Cannon. So this was actually yesterday uh, after I filmed the video. It's a four-cost artifact, and it says tap, put a charge counter on it, tap, remove three charge counters from it, destroy target permanent. So you have to kind of load the cannon for a couple turns, and then boom, something's dead. Uh, but generally, you're going to get away or to add more counters, whether it be proliferate, whether it, be, uh, whether it is untapping it at everyone's untap step. You're going to somehow get around this. But uh, it's a $7 card, and it was originally from Scars of Mirrodin. It has now been downshifted to rare from Mythic. And again, it's right about where you want it to be, although I expect the price to drop. Then we have Bosch Iron Golem. It's an 8 cost legendary artifact creature golem, 6 7 with trample, and you can pay 3 in a rad and sacrifice an artifact, and he deals damage to the sacrificed artifacts equal to the sac sacrificed artifacts converted mana cost to any target. Uh, not very good. 35 cents for a rare. Again, too many of the 35 cent rare. I would cons consider a bad rare to be $1 to $2, yet alone 35 cents. So keep that in mind. And then, okay, so here are all of the, like, showcase cards, including yesterday's and the one spoiled a really long time ago, just so you can kind of get a look at it. Um, you know, the new ones are Cyclonic Rift, Noble Hierarch, Sneak Attack, Dark Confidant, and Exploration, which I did not have on there, even though it was released yesterday. So, yeah, we are still missing a decent amount of these, so it'll be interesting to see these go on for a little bit. I believe we have about nine more days of spoilers, so that's pretty exciting. Either way, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, and I'll see you guys in the next one.